In the early morning of November 5th, 2005, the Seaborne Spirit, a 440-foot-long, 10,000-ton cruise ship, took off on its 16-day voyage from the port of Alexandria in Egypt and was bound for Mombasa, Kenya with 115 passengers on board. When the ship reached the coast of Somalia, two speedboats started approaching. One boat opened fire on the vessel while heavily armed bandits attempted to get on board. What ensued was a standoff between luxury and piracy, a clash of worlds at sea. While the crew of the ship managed to prevent the pilots from boarding the ship, this incident begs the question, how does a cruise ship, the very embodiment of elegance, defend itself from maritime marauders? You might think being on a cruise ship during a pirate attack is a nightmare waiting to happen. Surprisingly, passengers have been on board during these incidents, yet their safety isn't compromised as much as you'd think. This is in part because pirates aren't necessarily after the people on these ships. Their sights are set on something else entirely. Money, goods, and valuables, which explains why their primary targets are usually cargo or container ships. This also explains why these attacks usually occur in specific regions and popular trade routes, where pilots see opportunities for financial gain. So while passengers might find themselves in the midst of these incidents, the pirates aren't typically interested in causing harm to individuals. They're focused on their own agenda, seeking valuables rather than initiating altercations with people on board. But this is not to mean that passengers are completely safe during pirate attacks. It's a strange reality. Being on a ship during a pirate encounter isn't as dangerous as one might imagine. Yet understanding where these threats occur is key to appreciating the precautions taken by these cruise ships. While attacks can happen in various areas, some regions are notorious hotspots for these maritime bandits. The regions most likely to come under threat from pirate attacks include Indonesia, Malaysia, and Nigeria. In 2022, the most attempted piracy attacks occurred off the Straits of Singapore. Moreover, Southeast Asia is the location of 41% of the world's pirate attacks between 1995 and 2013. However, one area stands out for its history of relentless piracy, Somalia and its surrounding waters. The Somali piracy saga began in the early 2000s, fueled by a mix of political instability, poverty, and lawlessness. It was initially a threat to international fishing vessels during the early 2000s, only to rapidly escalate to expand to international shipping during the war in Somalia between 2006 and 2009. At their peak in 2011, Somali pirates carried out 212 attacks in the vast area spanning Somali waters, the Indian Ocean, the Red Sea, and the Gulf of Aden. These actions cost the world economy an estimated 18 billion US dollars in a year. The pirates hijacked ships as far away as 1,000 nautical miles from the Somali coast and held the ships and crews for ransom. The World Bank estimates that Somali pirates received more than 400 million US dollars in ransom payments between 2005 and 2012. But now, concerted international efforts, including naval patrols and increased security measures, have significantly reduced Somali piracy in recent years. The UN Security Council has adopted a resolution to combat the continuing threat of piracy off the coast of Somalia. However, the threat hasn't completely vanished. And this begs the big question, why do these pirates continue to target ships, risking their lives and the lives of others? Piracy isn't just a swashbuckling adventure. It's often driven by economic factors. Initially, pirates primarily targeted cargo ships due to the valuable goods they carried. The plan was to hold the entire ship for ransom and ask for a portion of the ship's cargo value as ransom. But here's the twist. Luxury cruise ships have become an enticing target too. Ever wondered why? To pirates, these ships are floating treasure troves, setting their sights on ransoms worth millions from each passenger. The logic is simple yet ruthless. Target the opulent and demand exorbitant sums for their safe release. This shift in pirate targets has had profound impacts. It has altered the dynamics of pirate activity, changing not only their methods but also impacting the vital waterways they operate in like the Suez Canal and other strategic passages. The threat posed by pirates has forced changes in maritime security, reshaping global trade routes and impacting the lives of those who rely on these vital waterways for commerce. When faced with the threat of pirate attacks, 
Cruise ships have a robust arsenal of defense mechanisms in place to keep intruders at bay. First up, anti-climbable walls, an ingenious physical barrier lining the ship's sides. These barriers are designed to repel pirates trying to climb aboard, boasting slippery surfaces or sharp edges that make scaling the ship a daunting task. Surveillance also takes center stage, employing state-of-the-art monitoring systems. Sonar, radar, and cameras work in tandem to spot approaching pirate vessels from a distance, giving the ship crucial time to react. Safe rooms or citadels act as fortified havens for the crew during an attack. Equipped with communication gear, they serve as a last line of defense, enabling distress calls and ensuring the crew's safety. Ever heard of Sonic Cannon? These devices emit disorienting high-pitched sounds, deterring pirates from getting too close. And who knew water could be a powerful defense? Water hoses spraying high-pressure jets create a slippery and chaotic environment around the ship, making it extremely challenging for pirates to board. But here's the kicker. New tech like the P-Trap concept has emerged. The P-Trap is a non-lethal anti-piracy system designed to prevent pirates from boarding ships. The system carries thin lines that float at the water level around the sides of the vessel. When pirate skiffs or boats come into contact with these lines, they get tangled with the engine, effectively disabling the vessel. This is one of several innovative methods being used to combat piracy at sea. If and when any of the aforementioned defense mechanisms fail to deter pirates from accessing the ship, most cruise ships have a precise plan in place, from detection to response and even legal action. Detection kicks in first. Surveillance systems spot and identify approaching pirate vessels. Once confirmed, the ship's crew swiftly communicates alerts to passengers, crew members, and maritime authorities. Emergency response protocols go into overdrive. Safe areas are secured and well-trained security personnel are mobilized to potential hotspots. If things escalate, armed security teams are on standby. Their mission? Minimize harm while neutralizing the threat. The safety of passengers and crew remains the top priority. These security agents are usually armed. Communication with maritime authorities is key. The ship establishes contact, coordinates support, and provides real-time updates. Legal measures come into play as the ship collaborates with law enforcement for repercussions. Maritime laws and police forces work hand-in-hand, -hand, ensuring these pirates face the consequences of their actions. Captured pirates are handed over to authorities for prosecution. So, what happens when these pirates get caught in the net of maritime law? Punishments are severe, reflecting the gravity of their crimes. Maritime piracy, an age-old menace, is met with resolute measures by nations worldwide. In Singapore, anyone who commits piracy can be punished with life imprisonment and caning. In India, an act of piracy is punishable by life imprisonment or death, especially if the act of piracy causes or attempts to cause death. All of these laws aim to reduce the occurrence of pirate attacks and make the pirates arrested enough deterrent to dissuade others. A remarkable instance where such justice was served is the case of the F.V. Halafeng II hijacking. A federal high court in Nigeria sentenced 10 pirates to 10 years in prison with a substantial fine under the Suppression of Piracy and Other Maritime Offenses Act of 2019. These pirates are part of the 27 apprehended within Nigeria's territorial waters, a testament to the relentless efforts of the Nigerian Navy and the Maritime Wing of the Nigeria Police. Their convictions underscore the global effort against piracy. Think back to incidents like the Achille Laro hijacking or the decline in Somali piracy, these illustrate how coordinated actions by maritime police and naval task forces led to the capture and prosecution of pirates. But here's the bottom line. Despite these incidents, cruise ships remain remarkably safe. The procedures in place have proven effective, ensuring the safety of passengers and crew even during rare encounters with pirates. So rest assured, even in the unlikely event of such an encounter, the measures employed by these ships stand as a shield against danger, reaffirming that a cruise remains a safe and unforgettable voyage. So, in the vast expanse of the seas where pirates may roam, the strength of cruise ship defenses and the firm hand of maritime law ensure that safety prevails, making every voyage an unforgettable and secure adventure. Bye for now.